on July 5th, uh, Nigerians learned that uh, Sanusi Barkindo had died. And uh, a lot of Nigerians were worried that information couldn't be confirmed. But the following morning, the NMPC went ahead to make that confirmation that the OPEC Secretary General, Mohamed Sanusi Barkindo, had died. And uh, he was an all-industry veteran who steered the group through the creation of the OPEC Plus Alliance. He was 63. Barkindo was in the final weeks of his six-year tenure as the top diplomat at the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, where he headed its Vienna-based secretariat. Now he had returned to Abuja in preparation for a post-OPEC career. No immediate cause of death was given, but that left a lot of Nigerians shocked, considering that he had met with President Muhammadu Buhari just a few hours before his passage, where Buhari commended him for a great job done at the OPEC on behalf of Nigeria, Africa, and of course, the world. And to take a look at the legacies left by Mohammed Barkindo, we have Dr. Umar uh, Farouk Ibrahim, Secretary General of the African Petroleum Producers Organization, uh, joining us live from London. So good to have you. Uh, first of all, I would like to start by saying condolences uh, to you and a lot of your friends who knew the late Barkindo, including his family, and then, of course, your former colleagues. Uh, I just want you all to understand this person we're talking about. Just share some light on the person of uh, the late Dr. Barkindo. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> and the condolences are uh, to not just the family of uh, Barkindo and Nigerians, but uh, to the global oil and gas industry as a whole. Um, the industry has lost a great person, someone who truly understands the in and outs of the oil industry. Uh, Barkindo has been in this uh, oil and gas industry uh, from 1986. The only time he didn't work in the industry was during uh, the four years that he worked first as a copper at the Nigerian Mining Corporation uh, with Dr. Lukman. And um, 1986, when uh, he came into the industry as a result of Dr. Lukman being appointed uh, the Minister of uh, Petroleum at that time, um, joining the Buhari government, yes. So uh, essentially, Barkindo, from the very beginning, has been an oil man. And he is most knowledgeable in this industry by any standard, nationally and internationally. Barkindo is one person that always thinks ahead. And you can not tell this when you see what he did in the NNPC where he really cut his teeth as an industry person, and also what he did in the uh, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, where he served initially for 16 years as Nigeria's uh, national representative to the OPEC Economic Commission Board, where he became acting for the Secretary General in 2006, and he came back 10 years later to become a substantive and full secretary general, a position he held for about six years, actually six years less, uh, less than uh, less a month um, when he died. All right. Uh, he was in charge of OPEC when the world faced COVID. And of course, we had spiraling oil prices coming up as a then. I want you to share some of the reforms that uh, Barkindo will be remembered for in OPEC, especially during this trying time of COVID. Um, Barkindo did for the oil industry and for OPEC what no other Secretary General has done in the history of the 62 years of OPEC. I say this because there have been crises in OPEC, in the industry, 
and among OPEC member countries in the past, like when they had the Iran Iraq war, Iraq Kuwait war, etc. Efforts have been made in the past to bring countries that are also oil producers but outside of OPEC to assist in the stabilization of the oil market. But all efforts in the past had failed. The point I think people need to understand is that out of the about 100 million barrels of oil that is produced daily, in the 60s and 70s, OPEC was producing up to 60%. 20 years ago to now, oil or OPEC is producing between 30 and 35% not even 40 percent and therefore there is a limit to how much opec can do to stabilize uh, the global oil market when there is instability or volatility on the market opec tries to bring stability by one when there is a glut they reduce their production and when there is shortage they increase their production in 2002, OPEC came up with this formula that when there is an increase or glut on the oil market, OPEC will reduce 500,000 barrels a day. If there is shortage for 10 working days, they will increase 5,000 barrels a day. And they realize that when they do this, Countries that are also producing oil but are not in the OPEC uh, group were benefiting. And as a result, OPEC's market share of the industry was declining while the others were rising. And in 2014, when the market was faced with this kind of challenge, OPEC decided that other countries that are also benefiting from the stabilization must come on board or OPEC was not going to do anything. And that informed the collapse of the oil uh, market in 2014 through to 2016. So when Barkindo came to uh, the position of Secretary General, he came at a time that the industry was already facing serious challenges. And one of the first things he told himself was that, look, there is no way OPEC alone can restore stability. We need the others. We need Russia. We need Norway. We need Brazil, Mexico. We need Oman. And all those countries that are producing oil but are not members of the OPEC family. And the first thing he did was to tell himself that he was going to visit each of these countries and go beyond their ministers to see their heads of state and tell them that, look, your countries also need stability. OPEC cannot continue. OPEC member countries cannot continue to reduce their production while you enjoy from the stability that they bring. And between August, when he assumed duty as secretary general and November, he was able to galvanize support and OPEC and these countries, Russia included, met in Algiers to found what you call the OPEC plus cooperation or declaration of cooperation group. The 11 countries came on board and agreed that they are going to make contribution towards the stabilization of the oil and gas industry. The point I'm trying to make is this. In the 60 years of OPEC between 1960 and um, 19, uh, 2014, 54 years, there has been periods of a lot of instability. But nobody in the past had been able to go beyond getting OPEC member countries alone to work on the stabilization. It was Barkindo. That's that why it's known as... 
I said that's why it's known as OPEC Plus, and um, I've seen that like, he received lots of awards, lots of support, and it's kudos for that. I mean, it was an innovation, and uh, it was more of like a diplomatic shuttle on his part. And <laughs> tell us how he was able to do such a diplomacy. What sort of uh, support did he get from um, uh, countries like Nigeria, I mean, his home country, in trying to bring people from outside OPEC to see it from a different dimension? I, incidentally, on the very day he died, Barakindo had visited President Buhari and he had told the world how he set out from the beginning on this mission. I know for certain, because we've discussed this a lot with uh, Barakindo, uh, from the very day uh, he assumed duty as uh, Secretary General of OPEC, that he had discussed this at length with the president of Nigeria. I know also for sure that the president had given him letters to take to heads of states of member other countries. I know also for sure that the president did speak with a number of his colleague presidents and paved the way for them to receive Barkindo when he arrived, uh, when he went to see them. That much I know. And the success of um, declaration of cooperation actually went beyond that. Because when COVID struck in 2019, 2020, even those countries that have been anti-OPEC from the very beginning, like the United States, we got them coming to talk to OPEC that let's come together, stabilize the global oil market. Okay. This was a feat that nobody, nobody in the history of OPEC or even the global oil industry ever expected that America would come to OPEC and say, look, we recognize you. We have to work together okay. in order to stabilize the global oil industry. Thank so you. really this is something that no one has done in the past. Uh, uh, thank you so much for that perspective. As we try to round off this conversation, uh, Barkindo died in service. And uh, I would want to ask what you think can be done uh, both by OPEC and Nigeria to remember this uh, gentleman, uh, diplomat, petroleum expert, and all of that. And then uh, secondly, if you look at uh, Barkindo himself, you understand that he tried his best to ensure that uh, Nigeria maximized the opportunities <laughs> created by OPEC always. But we haven't been able to meet our OPEC quota. What's been happening, except for recent, uh, the recent data release, I think just uh, this week, which is saying that Nigeria is beginning to pick up. What do we do? Because, of course, it would have been his dream to ensure that this country continues to meet its OPEC quota uh, and way beyond that. Um, two quick things. One, I, I, I'll briefly talk about the uh, OPEC quota and why Nigeria has not been able uh, to meet its quota or not necessarily meeting its quota, but also really increasing its production, being able to, um, to reach where it's expected to be. There was a time Nigeria was producing 2.5 million barrels. 2005, Nigeria produced 2.5 million barrels a day. 2009 were producing le less than 1 million a day. So there are seriously big uh, challenges that we should look within for. There are crises in the areas of production, but I think the more fundamental reason is that Nigeria, like most African countries, relies tremendously on foreign capital, foreign technology, and to some extent with Nigeria, not with other countries, foreign expertise to operate an industry that they have been in for over 70 years. You can't continue to rely on foreign experts for everything. After 50 years, you should be able to say that we have mastered this industry and we can do it. We have the resources, the capital to put there. But the success I would want to say about Barkindo is one thing that I think every Nigerian should learn. Barkindo succeeded in this industry because he had been lucky in his life 
to have worked with Dr. Ilwanu Lukman. From the day Barkindo went to do his service, he met Dr. Lukman. And Dr. Lukman decided from day one that he was going to bring up this young man to be somebody. So the successes he, made, he, he, he recorded to a large extent, especially the diplomatic shuttle and so on, can be attributed to the tutelage that he got. How many of our leaders today take the trouble to identify young people and say that one, two, three guys, I'm going to make sure that your life is better in the next 50, 20 or 30 years. That is a challenge that we face in Africa and in Nigeria. All right. Uh, Dr. Farouk, uh, Omar Farouk Ibrahim is the Secretary General of the African Petroleum Producers Organization in Congo, Brazzaville. We must thank you so much for this illumination. And of course, uh, we join you to mourn this ally of yours because you all work together with the late uh, Dr. Rilwan Lukman, who you have said has been a mentor, not only to both of you, but to a lot of Nigerians. And I think you have posed a challenge to our viewers, uh, especially those who are leaders, to actually mentor a lot of people in the oil and gas industry and then of course other parts of uh, leadership we must thank you so much for joining us and we hope to have you some other time well that's how it's been for this edition of the arise interview do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in abuja goodbye and thank you for watching i'm sonna sambo